All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to the SNAP VDI Virtual Lunch and Learn. Uh, we're getting started here uh, at this very moment. Um, my name is Tyler Newberry. I'm the Marketing Programs Manager for SNAP VDI, and I'll be your host and moderator for the Lunch and Learn today. Uh, with me today is one of our senior sales team members, uh, Andrew Lacey, as well as Solutions Engineer Matthew Tinney. Uh, these guys will be joining me just momentarily, um, but first just want to go over a few quick things about the virtual lunch and learn today before we get started. All right, so number one, if you are in a pizza delivery zone and requested a pizza during your registration, uh, your pizza should be arriving within the next few minutes if it hasn't already. Uh, for my folks on the West Coast, your pizza will be arriving at 11 a.m. Pacific time. Um, that is the earliest that we can schedule the delivery for you. Uh, once again, West Coast folks, uh, your pizza will be arriving at 11 a.m. Pacific time, which is just about an hour from now. Uh, for everybody else, uh, sometimes the delivery person runs a few minutes behind. If they are, are running late, just uh, please be patient with us and be sure to let me know if your pizza has not arrived by 1.15 Eastern Time. Again, let me know if your pizza has not arrived by 1.15 Eastern Time. That typically means that the pizza delivery person is more than just a little late. Uh, email is the quickest way to let me know if your pizza has not arrived on time. My email is tylerin at ami.com, and I've also listed that in your chat screen um, and on the presentation. So if you need to reach me, um, you can just email me at tylerin at ami.com. Second quick thing, uh, please ask us questions. We want to provide as much of an interactive experience uh, for all of you as humanly possible. So feel free to shoot your question over on the Q&A communicator located at the bottom right-hand corner of your screen, and we will either get to your question live on air or we will send you a message back via the Q&A communicator if we have time. And the last quick thing is uh, if we do experience any technical difficulties today, uh, such as losing audio, if the screen becomes grainy or something like that, uh, just please bear with us while we fix the issue. These typically resolve themselves um, and uh, don't usually take very much time at all. Um, but, you know, as you all know, technical issues can certainly happen uh, without, uh, without any notice. Um, but that's all I've got for uh, my part of the presentation today. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Andrew for part one of our presentation. So, Andrew, they are all yours. Thanks, Tyler. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today. My name is Andrew Lacey. I'm a member of the same uh, sales team here at AMI. <clears throat> and today we're going to be talking about virtual desktop infrastructures, or uh, VDI, as well as our SNAP VDI product line. So I'll go through a quick slide deck. Uh, then Matthew, one of our VDI engineers here, will show a live demo of the SNAP VDI management interface. So here's a quick agenda of what we're going to be covering today in the presentation. I'll do an introduction into AMI as a company for those of you who aren't already familiar with us. Uh, we'll do an overview of VDI technology in general. Then we'll dive headfirst into SNAP VDI. So I'll do an introduction into SNAP VDI. I'll explain the architecture, uh, what sets us apart from other VDI solutions in the market today. Uh, then we're going to throw some real world pricing out there to show you exactly how we stack up to the competition. I'll give an overview of our SNAP VDI support. Uh, then we're going to wrap things up with a live demo of the management interface. And as Tyler mentioned, uh, please don't hesitate to ask questions throughout the presentation. Uh, we'll do our best to answer them via chat as we go along. And we typically get a lot more than we can handle uh, throughout the presentation. So for those of you who um, we're not able to get to during the presentation, we'll be sure to uh, send you emails with the answers following the event. So who is AMI? Uh, I'm sure a lot of you on this webinar are, are already familiar with AMI uh, through one of our various products. We were founded over three decades ago in Atlanta, Georgia in 1985, and our original founder is still our president and CEO today. Uh, we have a worldwide presence with 12 offices across the globe, including offices in the U.S., uh, Germany, India, China, Japan, Taiwan, and South Korea. Uh, however, our worldwide headquarters is here in Atlanta, Georgia, and this isn't just where I sit and our sales team sit in marketing and engineering, but perhaps most importantly, this is where all of our support is located as well. So if you do happen to call into support, you will be directly dialing an engineer sitting in Atlanta, Georgia. All of our support is U.S.-based. We do not outsource support uh, or host it overseas. We have over 1,400 employees worldwide, over 80% of which are in engineering, so this is a true testament to our focus on engineering high-quality products and offering them to our customers at fair prices. Uh, our mission statement is providing our customers the highest quality products, first time, every time. 
And between all of our divisions at AMI, <clears throat> we have one or more products in over half the computers in the world. So whether you're aware of it or not, there's a great chance that your infrastructure has relied on at least one of our products to stay up and running over the years. Uh, we also have over 375 patents as a company and an ISO 9001 certification as well. I'm sure the reason that many of you are already uh, familiar with AMI is due to the AMI BIOS. Uh, and for those of you who weren't familiar with AMI before now, uh, hopefully the images on this slide might be jogging your memory. But we launched AMI in 1985, or AMI BIOS in 1985, and this is what ultimately put AMI um, on the map. Uh, we quickly became the worldwide leader in BIOS software, which is a title that we still have a strong grasp on today, with over 65% of the BIOS market share worldwide and growing. Millions of systems with AMI BIOS ship every year, uh, and everything from servers, uh, storage arrays, laptops, desktops, and even newer hardware such as thin clients and zero clients for VDI, uh, which is what we're going to be talking about today as well. And another product I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with is the Mega Raid controller card. Uh, we launched Mega Raid in 1994, and by 1996, we were the largest third-party manufacturer of Raid controller cards in the world. Uh, we sold this division off to LSI Logic in 2001, but in 2004, we brought the Mega Raid team back together, kind of brought the band back together, if you will, and began developing our own high-performance SAN devices, which ultimately became our store trends division. Uh, store trends was founded in 2004 by the Mega Raid team, and this is the data storage division of AMI. Uh, so Store Trends manufactures high-performance SSD hybrid arrays, which is a combination of solid state and spinning disk drives in the same unit, for those of you who aren't familiar, uh, as well as all flash SAN arrays, or AFAs. We have thousands of these units shipped, uh, installed worldwide with a heavy focus on the small to medium-sized business niche, uh, and I believe we even have a few Store Trends customers tuned into this webinar today, so uh, we really appreciate you joining us. Uh, we have a lot of these systems deployed for VDI environments as an integrated solution, which we'll touch on more in a bit here. And real quick, uh, the last AMI slide before we just jump into VDI uh, is MegaRack. This is our remote access controller division. Uh, we launched this division in 1997 and uh, took on Dell as a customer the following year in 98 to manufacture their iDRAC card. Uh, we've also taken on HP and worked with IBM um, as a customer with their um, remote access controllers. So if you're familiar with the Dell iDRAC card or HP ILO card, or some of the, uh, the IBM uh, remote access controller cards. That's the same technology, or really just the similar technology is behind um, a lot of the servers for the remote uh, access controller piece. So what is VDI? Uh, I'm sure of you, I'm sure a lot of you are already very knowledgeable of what uh, VDI is, what it entails, but we're gonna start off with the basics for those of you who aren't familiar. Uh, so VDI stands for Virtual Desktop Infrastructure. And it's essentially bringing virtualization to the next level or the next stage. Uh, nearly everything else in the IT infrastructure has already been virtualized. Storage, servers, switches, and uh, VDI virtualizes end-user desktops. So with VDI, uh, users' operating systems reside within a dedicated virtual machine on a central server or server cluster, and physical desktops are typically replaced with either uh, thin clients or zero clients that connect users to that central server or server cluster. So simply put, it's a, a shift from the local client-centric view to a central server-centric view, since all of your users' data and resources come from a central location. So what are some of the advantages of implementing VDI? Uh, the biggest uh, advantage of VDI, hands down, is the ease of management. Since all of your users are centralized uh, to a server or a server cluster, you can manage and monitor all users within your environment from a single access point, <clears throat> which includes the ability to do mass software updates, uh, software installations, patch updates, opposed to updating desktops one by one. Uh, so imagine just being able to deploy hundreds of desktops with um, fully functional software suites with just really a few clicks of a mouse. And another advantage is uptime. VDI solutions, including Snap VDI, run on enterprise uh, hardware, opposed to the consumer-grade hardware that users run on. Uh, these solutions have full redundancy in the event of failure, which, of course, translates into more uptime and worker productivity. Uh, power savings is another big advantage that isn't commonly brought up. Uh, zero clients use about five to seven watts of power, 
whereas a desktop is using about 50 watts, so about a tenth of the power usage. Uh, you can extrapolate that over your entire user base and you know you can be begin to imagine the amount of power savings that you'll realize year over year. And the next one here is security. Opposed to traditional desktop infrastructures with numerous points to protect, uh, BDI has only a single point to secure. So you can also set policies uh, and permissions at the user level to manage what users can and cannot access. Uh, you can lock USB ports to protect against user viruses. Just um, additional things there to uh, cut back on external threats. And the last advantage is versatility. Um, with VDI, you can create <clears throat> different types of users, with the two main types being pooled or non-persistent and persistent. Uh, for those of you who aren't as familiar with these terms, a pooled user is one that uses the same applications day in and day out and does not need the ability to add software or customize their desktop. So, for example, if a pooled user downloads a software to their desktop, once they end their session and log back in, that application will be gone. So pooled users can only use the applications that are part of the template that is created by the administrator, and their settings will uh, ultimately revert back to that template at the beginning of each session. Um, the user data is all saved, of course, but their settings will remain the same. Uh, whereas a, persist, a persistent user, on the other hand, um, those users are basically like traditional desktops in the sense that any software that's downloaded or settings that are adjusted are saved to that user. So those are the two different types of users that you can create in BDI. And you can also integrate, uh, integrate your own devices uh, called Bring Your Own Device or BYOD. Um, so you can log into the VDI via tablets or laptops or any other device. So there are two uh, primary different types of VDI implementations. There's integrated and standalone. Uh, an integrated VDI solution utilizes your existing server and storage infrastructure. And <clears throat> this is really the most common for smaller uh, VDI deployments where you can comfortably accommodate users on your existing hardware. Uh, standalone solutions are dedicated to VDI, so the software and hardware is only put to use for the VDI solution. And these are more common for larger deployments. Uh, a couple of the uh, big advantages of um, a standalone BDI solution over an integrated solution are user management and performance. Uh, with a standalone solution, it's much easier to determine exactly what users are using what resources and how many resources they need uh, since they're contained uh, in a segmented environment. Whereas with an integrated solution, it's much more difficult to determine what resources you have available overall how many resources you need um, for your users, how many users you can maintain without bogging down your entire infrastructure, and so on and so forth. <clears throat> so to reflect that last slide, uh, we have a lot of storage trends customers uh, with high performance hybrid or all flash storage arrays that are running uh, VDI on the units, uh, but the majority of these customers are also running their production environment off the unit uh, as they've simply added VMware Horizon View licenses as needed, uh, so this would be considered an integrated solution. Uh, if you want to have everything in a single system, including your VDI environment, we have good bit of storage trends customers doing this and would recommend this route, especially if you only have a handful of VDI users. So if you only have 5 to 20 users or so and don't really plan on expanding much in the future, uh, this might be the most economical route for you. Uh, Snap VDI, on the other hand, is a standalone VDI solution. Uh, meaning this will be completely isolated and completely segmented from your production environment, uh, your databases, and also your applications. Uh, the only thing that SnapVDI does utilize in your existing network fabric uh, are your DHCP server, Active Directory, and Firewall. Everything else is completely standalone from a hardware and uh, also a software perspective. So now we'll start going into more detail <clears throat> on SnapVDI's components and architecture. Uh, there are five main components that make up SnapVDI, and I have slides dedicated to each one of these, but to summarize them real quick, uh, Spark is our patented caching acceleration software that guarantees high performance and higher uh, quality user experience to each user. Uh, Manager is our interface that allows the administrator to manage and monitor the entire solution from a single access point. SnapVDI servers, this is two servers in high availability for complete redundancy. Um, SnapVDI Storage is our fault-tolerant uh, storage console that uh, stores all of your users' data, uh, and the zero clients are the end-user devices that include our patented SnapVDI View firmware. Uh, the last component here is Microsoft. SnapVDI does utilize Microsoft licenses, 
uh, the majority of which are cust um, most customers already have in their infrastructure, but uh, if you don't, then we can also provide these as well. Uh, and they'll just be pre-installed on the system. So here's a visual representation of the SNAP BDI architecture. And um, personally, I think it's easiest to explain starting from the bottom of the chart and working your way up to the top. So at the bottom, we have what's called the SNAP VDI brick, and this includes the SNAP VDI storage appliance and the two uh, SNAP VDI servers in high availability with Microsoft Enterprise cluster software running on the servers. Our SNAP VDI manager software resides on the Microsoft layer and comes pre-installed on the system. And this is where administrators create and deploy VMs for their users. Uh, SNAP VDI does plug into your existing network, which then will connect SNAP VDI to your users to your clients, uh, where you can also differentiate between pooled and uh, persistent users. Uh, as I mentioned a minute ago, the servers and storage make up what we call the SNAP VDI brick. Um, the two servers in the brick are in an HA configuration for complete redundancy with no single point of failure uh, in the event of a hardware failure. So this ensures that your users are always up and running. Uh, also, since the servers are fault tolerant with one being active and one being passive, we can actually upgrade the servers with zero downtime or maintenance windows. Uh, we can do this by first upgrading the passive server, then essentially performing a failover to the upgraded controller, then upgrading the now passive server, then failing back over. So no downtime is required for uh, hardware maintenance or software updates. Uh, the storage component is the central repository for all user data. This is a dual controller RAID protected array that also supports snapshots and replications for uh, complete data protection. Uh, we support replication between separate SNAP VDI bricks. So, for example, if you have a few branch offices, each with their own SNAP VDI brick, you can replicate between them for additional redundancy uh, to protect against any type of a site disaster. Also, all of the hardware in the storage console is field replaceable and hot swappable. So if you do need to replace a drive or a power supply or cooling fans, all of this can be done on the fly without uh, any type of downtime or uh, disruption. And uh, our Spark software, uh, this is our primary differentiator between SNAP VDI and uh, really any other type of VDI solution out there on the market. This is our patented caching acceleration algorithm that uh, utilizes auto tiering functionality. So opposed to most caching that follows the first in, first out FIFO methodology, uh, Spark actually monitors how frequently the data is accessed at the block level. And we keep this data on the cache layer, which is our RAM layer. And this ensures that you and your users receive extreme performance uh, as well as an unmatched user experience. Uh, this is very similar to the auto tiering technology that I'm sure many of you have on your primary SAN or NAS uh, storage arrays today, but we are the only vendor who's actually taken the time to develop our own software that's specifically geared toward delivering high performance to hundreds of VDI users simultaneously. Uh, some of the highlights from Spark are, of course, performance faster than a desktop, and the entire uh, VDI infrastructure can boot within seconds with immediate uh, access to applications, far less physical storage because of data deduplications done in the cache layer, uh, faster VM provisioning and cloning, and of course all of these translate into uh, an improved user productivity. Uh, SNAP VDI Manager, this is the interface that we'll show uh, a demo of in a few minutes here. Uh, and this interface allows administrators to manage the entire VDI infrastructure, so all of their users uh, from a single access point. This is where you manage and monitor your users, uh, provision system resources per user requirements, mass install software patches, uh, also create desktop templates for your different types of users. So for example, a school could have one template for the users, one template for the teachers, and a separate template for their administrative staff. Uh, SNAP VDI Manager can be accessed um, locally, uh, also remotely, uh, and once again, all from a single interface and a single access point. Uh, the last SNAP VDI component is the Zero Client. Uh, this is the end user device, hardware device, uh, that typically replaces the bulky desktop towers and routes the user to their data and resources, so their CPU, RAM, and uh, possibly GPU, that are on the central servers or the server cluster. Our Zero Client uses about seven watts of power uh, compared to 50 watts needed for the average desktop tower. And they also include our own firmware called VIEW. And this works with our Spark technology to ensure high performance, but also allows us to do some cool stuff 
Uh, we can do uh, like a USB port locking, so we can actually lock individual USB ports, which is great for security and virus protection and just making sure that no external threats brought in by any of your users, whether intentionally or unintentionally, makes its way into your network. Another cool feature we have is our network power on and power off, where we can actually schedule your zero clients to power on and power off at certain times of the day. Uh, this just really goes to further increase your power savings. Um, our clients also support dual monitors. <clears throat> we support both the uh, uh, VGA and DVI connections, which can be simultaneously used if required. Another thing worth noting here is that while we do provide our own Xero clients, uh, SnapVDI also functions with other clients from other vendors. So if you already have clients in your environment, maybe from an existing VDI implementation, like if you have ProLogic Thin clients or Dell Wise Thin clients, um, uh, or you wanted to maybe even repurpose your desktops you already have in your environment, we can absolutely do that. But that being said, um, our Xero clients were specifically engineered to function with the entire SnapVDI solution as a whole. So they will deliver higher performance and also more functionality than what you would realize with other uh, thin clients or zero clients from other vendors. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the SnapVDI solution does require external Microsoft licenses, which we've listed, listed out here. Uh, there are four licenses total, two of which are dedicated to the servers. So we have the enterprise server licenses and a software assurance pack. And the other two are user specific. So we have an RDS license and a VDI, uh, VDA license per user. Uh, we can provide the entire solution that includes the licenses if you don't already have them. But we don't do this as a default. Uh, and there are two reasons behind this, uh, two main reasons. The, the first one being that most of our customers we found uh, have at least one or two of the licenses in their environment at least. Uh, second reason being pricing. So a lot of organizations out there, especially nonprofit and public sector organizations, can uh, obtain better pricing from Microsoft than what we can. Uh, and so we don't want to pen penalize any of our customers uh, by making them pay more for licenses or uh, certainly not making them pay for the same licenses again. So once again, if you want all the licenses included and you just really don't want to touch anything at all, we can provide all these licenses that you need to be up and running, uh, but the solution does not include them by default. So let's talk about the physical models that SnapVDI offers. Uh, we have three models for SnapVDI. We have a B50, a B100, and a B150 brick. Uh, B50 can maintain up to 50 standard knowledge users. The B100 can manage up to 100 users, and the B150 can manage up to 150 knowledge users. And once again, each brick includes three total units. So we have two uh, fault tolerant servers and one dual controller storage appliance. Um, also, SnapVDI has a modular expansion path meaning that if you have 200 users, uh, we could have a B150 and then a B50, or if you have 400 users, we could spec out two B150 bricks and a B100. So essentially the bricks can hit any incre increment of 50 users, uh, but we can also further refine our solution through the amount of zero clients we provide you. So let's say you had 140 users uh, or something like that. We could scope out a B150, but only with 140 zero clients, which will give you, give you another 10 users that you can grow into and work with before you need to add another uh, another brick. So what are some of the advantages of SNAP VDI specifically over uh, other VDI solutions? Uh, first one here is seamless integration. SNAP VDI is the only turnkey ready to deploy hardware and software solution that plugs into your existing network. So it's just one solution from one vendor. Uh, Multi-vendor solutions, on the other hand, can get extremely messy, especially when it comes to support. You've probably had a scenario where you have an issue and you call VMware and they point their finger at your EMC storage, who then blames your HP switches, who then blames your Dell servers. Uh, but because SnapVDI is a complete solution, uh, there's a single installation and there's also a single support call if any issues do happen to arise. Uh, Multi-vendor solutions are also all, almost always more expensive, uh, which we'll take a look at in a second here. Uh, and they're almost never purpose-built for VDI. So while some of the components like Horizon View, VMware's Horizon View, or Citrix Zen Desktop are specifically for uh, VDI, they always rely on other commodity server and storage hardware or an existing hardware infrastructure that's not specifically tuned or geared toward uh, VDI. Uh, the next benefit is performance, and this is largely due to our pro uh, proprietary Spark caching software that we covered earlier. Uh, this entire solution was 
purpose built from the ground up for VDI, and as with really any other IT product, when all of the components are just made from the onset to work together and understand one another, uh, it inherently guarantees uh, much higher performance and higher reliability across the system as a whole. And the last benefit here is value. Um, I'll compare our pricing to other VDI solutions in the next couple of slides, uh, and you'll see that we'll beat other vendor solutions by at least 15%. We also offer free POC systems, uh, so if you'd like to test the, and evaluate the system in-house for 30 days or 45 days prior to purchasing, uh, you can do so with zero risk or investment. Uh, so for our POC units, we actually send you a brand new system so that if you do decide to purchase the unit at the end of the evaluation period, you can simply just roll into that unit as your new production BDI environment opposed to having to rip everything out, ship it back, then have a new system shipped out, and then have that new system installed. So very easy rollout. Uh, we typically include about 10 zero clients with our POCs. So um, if you need more for your full rollout, we'll simply ship out the additional zero clients uh, that are required for your project. But uh, if anyone here is interested in doing a POC as an AVI, please reach out to Tyler, uh, Tyler Newberry. Uh, you should have all received an email from him at some point prior to the event, and I'm sure he'll be happy to uh, send over any further details on the process. Uh, the next couple of slides here, uh, these, are, these are going to be some quick screenshots comparing us and real-world competing solutions for 100 and VD, 150 VDI users. Uh, so the first one, Snap VDI, compared to a VDI solution comprised of pure storage for the storage piece, uh, VMware for the virtualization layer, and Cisco for the physical servers. And you can pretty much replace some of these with their competitors. For instance, EMC instead of pure storage, or HP instead of Cisco. And you'll come out with more or less the same total price, uh, but this is a real-world pricing uh, of what you would actually see uh, on the market for the solution. Uh, you can see they both have the same type of hardware. We both have servers, we both have storage, and either zero clients or thin clients. Uh, their solution uses VMware's uh, virtualization software while we run on Microsoft, but the competing solution is priced noticeably higher. Uh, the solution is about 20%, has about 20% higher cost per user than our SNAP VDI solution. So for 150 users, you would save almost $47,000 uh, going with the SNAP VDI solution. Uh, same deal here, uh, except we're comparing um, against VMware and SimpliVity. Uh, for those of you who don't know SimpliVity very well, this is a hyper-converged vendor, meaning their servers and storage are combined into a uh, single physical device. Uh, similar to the last slide, regardless of whether we're looking at SimpliVity or Nutanix or Scale, that's uh, Scale Computing, um, which are other hyper-converged vendors, the, uh, the pricing will be more or less the same. So all other things equal, the SNAP VDI cost per user is about 15% less than the solution. Um, even though we're using uh, three years of poor pricing compared to their one-year term, and all while also being just one vendor with one turnkey product. So for 150 users, you would be looking at saving upwards of $40,000 with the SNAP VDI solution in this case. And the last slide here before we jump into the demo is SNAP VDI support. Uh, one call, that's all. So once again, compared to other VDI solutions, our support is a one-stop shop. All of our support is based out of our headquarters here in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, so we do not outsource uh, any of our support uh, to any of our international offices. Everything comes directly from our headquarters here in Atlanta, Georgia. We offer both next business day on-site services <clears throat> as well as four-hour on-site uh, if it's required. Uh, as well as zero downtime maintenance and software upgrades. Our support uh, terms range from one to five years, uh, but we can also co-term our support plans. So if you'd like to have them coincide with the existing support plans that you already have in place on your existing hardware software licenses, uh, we can make that happen as well. We're, we're very flexible. So that's all for me. I appreciate all y'all's time today. I'll go ahead and turn things over to Matthew, and he will show a live demo of the SNAP VI Manager. All right. Thanks, Andrew. Let me just grab this real quick and set this up. So what I'm going to be doing here today is just walking you through a standard demo of our SNAP VDI Manager and going through the life cycle 
of what an administrator would most likely do throughout the system to manage everything. So upon logging in, uh, we try and keep everything streamlined and organized. It's one of our top features is the usability and control an administrator would have over the entire VDI solution. So here we have things split into three different panes. We have this center pane here, which is all of the pertinent information and features that will populate as you choose the various options from this left column here, all the different uh, power and util uh, utilized features that we have. We also provide a quick reference to all of the active tasks or what your timeline of activity has been. So as you can see here, I went ahead and populated a few things, uh, the success of one test and then the failure of another. We can even go into further detail and examine uh, what went wrong. Uh, here you can see that we had an issue with installing in the system image. Ends up that was caused due to a uh, product key, so you can go into more depth and quickly identify what's wrong and go ahead and get things pushed out even quicker. So to get started uh, with your VDI solution, the most popular thing that you would do or get started with is creating your uh, global template. Uh, from here we have two options, uh, or two different profiles that go into creating your template or your VM that would go into your uh, final template, uh, the hardware and the OS profile. Uh, this gives you the power to choose the uh, various components that go into the VM that you're creating. For hardware, uh, we can choose anything from processing power, memory, you name it. All that can be customized uh, to your needs. Go in, edit, add, uh, select how much you want for the processors what you'd like for your memory, if you'd like it to be dynamic and grow over time based off of the utilization of your users. Uh, you make different profiles for the hardware to uh, dictate if the user is using something small like just Word documents, they're utilizing the internet connectivity to go out to various networks, or if they're utilizing heavier programs like CAD or Maya or Blender, you name it. We have complete power over that. We even have an additional unit for uh, GPUs if you want that increased performance for those higher end uh, 4K, 8K resolution uh, and quality. But the second item is the OS profile. Load in your various different uh, ISOs. Uh, here I have, uh, for example, Windows 8 and Windows 10. We also support Windows 7. All can be loaded in here. Go ahead and format them the way you'd like and make them as a building block for when you go to create your VM and template. And we also provide a quick library of what you have loaded on here. Uh, once those two components are provided, they'll go into the global templates and go ahead and create the VM. What this is doing is taking those two building blocks, the hardware and the OS profile that we created, combining them into one sleek feature, which will go to create the VM. Once the VM is created, you can go and interact with the VM, set it up like you would any other desktop, and have that uh, specialized with all the applications and software uh, you would need for that user type. Here are just quick selections. We also provide the ability to, on the fly, if you'd like to make a last minute change or change a few more different settings, such as the language, we provide that uh, flexibility. And we're also uh, interconnected with your domain, such as Active Directory, DHCP, DNS, so that you can go and grab your different user types from your pool to allow them different types of accesses and what have you. From here, you can create your template and then deploy all of the VMs from that template which is the key point for VDI solutions, the effect that you set up one desktop, but you can replicate it multiple times into a group, such as a pooled group, kind of like what you would experience at a school district or a library where the image is persistent or uh, available from the same uh, access point every time. Every time you log in, you're always guaranteed to get that fresh image exactly uh, the way you did the last time you logged in. 
With that, you have the control to redeploy desktops on the fly and all of the manageability that you would expect from a VDI solution. We also offer the other option, which is persistent users, which is what you'd expect with any type of desktop. You log in, all the changes that you made are always saved and that you would always have that uh, same experience as you'd expect with a home desktop, plus the ability of having an administrator uh, able to control and correct and upload all the firmware similar to the other option. Uh, with that, the deployment of new firmware or new settings or software updates are all extremely uh, accessible from the SNAP BDI Manager. Uh, simply by uploading the new firmware or changing all of the needed updates, you can schedule when you'd like it pushed out uh, and have it run in the background overnight so that it doesn't interfere with your uh, active users. Besides all of the uh, functionality, we also provide the support so that the administrator can view and manage the hardware components of your uh, SNAP BDI collection. So you can keep track of all of your separate hard disks as well as all of the components, which brings me into the point of our alert system, which is fully customizable. You can set up your various alerts in the system so that you'll be informed uh, via email to your uh, any failures or successes all can be set in here. So if you'd like to know if someone is logging into a client at an odd hour, that's completely customizable. You can be informed of that. Uh, if someone is opening your enclosure, you can be informed. All that can be set. Other uh, things you could set up include your client policy editor. So you can go in here and have even more control by selecting what the client provides to a user. For example, you can decide, I want to shut off the USB ports for security reasons, so that if anyone plugs anything in, it won't be detected. I want to be able to control to make sure that they are connected to a specific Wi-Fi connection, or I want to make sure that uh, they don't go and tamper with any of the uh, various settings, network security protocols. Uh, I want to make sure that they cannot modify anything so that I have supreme control over what's going on in their environment. Uh, with all this said, uh, it's very streamlined. You can keep uh, good tabs on all of the clients, who's logged in, uh, when they logged in, how long they've been logged in. Make sure that you uh, have control on that end as well. And we also provide the ability to keep track and keep tabs of all the different licenses you have loaded into your system. So if you have a few uh, software licenses you need to keep track of, or if you have licenses for, say, uh, Office 365, you'll keep track of all those. Uh, they'll be uploaded, and it'll keep you informed on when you might need to expand upon them. All right. And I think that just about covers the uh, overview of what the SNAP BDI Manager uh, can provide for you. Perfect. Well, uh, thank you so much, Matthew and Andrew. Uh, I guess we'll go ahead and get started with uh, knocking out some of these questions that we've received uh, both on the uh, Q&A communicator as well as some of the questions that you guys submitted uh, online during your registration. Uh, so we've got quite a few here, so we'll just jump right into them, and uh, maybe we can even wrap up a few minutes early so everyone can kind of get back to work or uh, enjoy the last few minutes of their lunch break. Um, but go ahead and getting started here. We had one from Danielle in Pennsylvania. Uh, I think, Matthew, this, this will be a question for you. Uh, so in regards to desktop images, uh, where are the desktop images stored and uh, how are they loaded onto PCs? Okay. I'm guessing they mean, uh, you know, thin clients or, you know, your VDI right. rollout. So your uh, desktop images uh, your, and your ISOs are all loaded onto the storage system that we provide with our solution. So uh, as mentioned, it is uh, HA set up, so two servers as well as the storage. Uh, all this, including uh, the user data, will be saved to that storage system. What the clients are actually doing is accessing the VM that's hosted on the servers, which have access to the storage to provide you that uh, 
seamless uh, solution. Perfect. Um, so this next one came to us from Dave in Wisconsin. Um, he needs to be able to run voice over IP phones through a thin client and through SNAP VDI. Uh, is that possible? Absolutely. So uh, we're pretty in tuned with uh, most call centers and they utilize voice over IP. Uh, we experience this, uh, experience this all the time and it's uh, no trouble. Good deal, good deal. Um, this one comes to us from Jerry in Ohio. Uh, what does SNAP VDI bring to the table that Citrix or VMware uh, does not have? Uh, yeah. So in addition to what uh, Andrew mentioned earlier in the presentation, our big caveat is usability and manageability. Uh, all of it can be easily done by a single administrator, control all aspects of the solution without uh, the need of any outside or external software. Perfect. Uh, this next one came to us from Richard in Georgia. Um, in regards to dedicated graphics um, and allocatable memory and storage as well as a VPN requirement, uh, I guess can you just touch on um, maybe each one of those things and um, let us know how that uh, pertains to SNAP VDI? Absolutely. So as I mentioned with the hardware profile, uh, you can go into very succinct uh, allocation of your memory, your CPU, for your users. So if you know that you have a lot of office workers who are only using something like, say, Word documents and doing just uh, reading PDFs, you can decide, all right, I'm going to give them one gig of memory and one processor. Uh, but say that you have your CAD user who is using a high-end software, you can say, all right, I'm going to give him a little bit more power. I'm going to give him four processors and eight gigs of memory. Well, you can also scope it to say, oh, I know that he's probably going to be away from his desk and not utilizing all those resources, so I'm actually going to have him decrease over time uh, and have the available gigs drop down to, say, four, so that they can be reallocated to the other users who are benefiting from higher-end software or what have you if they have the requirement for it. Perfect. Um, this next one comes to us from Alicia, also in Georgia. Um, how would uh, VDI improve our office and affect our employees who uh, work from home? Okay. Uh, so the big thing here is they would have a very similar experience to what they have now. However, as far as support goes from, say, there's a fail, uh, uh, issue with their desktop that they have now, uh, that would require your administrator support guy to drive out there and fix it. Whereas this, a simple phone call to whoever's accessing or controlling the SNAP VDI manager can say, all right, I can take a look and redeploy your VM, and boom, you're back up and running. All right. Um, this next one comes to us from uh, another Matt uh, in Illinois this time. Um, how well are local USB devices handled, and how diverse of a desktop environment uh, can this handle? Okay. So, yeah, we, we've had a lot of experience with various uh, USB devices, say, uh, signature pad, card readers, mice, keyboard, uh, all those different things uh, we've tried and tested. Uh, as far as your desktop environment, uh, how diverse it can get, well, it's basically a desktop that you can customize any way you would. Uh, so with this VM, you'd go in, load all your different settings, save it as a template. Uh, you then have that image to push out to uh, any number of your clients, as well as go back and create various uh, alternative templates and VMs for others to utilize. So the customizability is on point with anything you'd find on a desktop. Good deal, good deal. Um, this next one comes to us from Brian in Ohio. Um, what's the difference between SNAP VDI and Microsoft VDI that's running uh, in Hyper-V? All right. So, again, it's a single interface. Uh, everything that you need to do with this solution is done simply from the SNAP VDI manager. Uh, and because SNAP VDI works in tandem with Hyper-V, uh, the similarities to uh, Microsoft VDI it's about the same on that scale. Okay, good deal. Um, from Darren in Ohio, uh, what's the general size of a VDI file, uh, especially when you're trying to size out storage requirements, and uh, what are the basic specs of your uh, host servers? 
Okay. So we utilize thin provisioning so that it grows as you grow. Uh, as for the basic specs, uh, each server has 768 gigs of memory and two eight-core processors to give you all the resources you need. All right. Um, this one comes to us from uh, Hark in, uh, in Kentucky. Um, availability of VDI for frequent tra travelers uh, with low or no internet access uh, times that they wish to be productive. I guess how how reliant is Snap VDI on your um, on your internet access? Okay, for low internet access uh, from anywhere, you can uh, RDP as long as you can RDP into your uh, network, uh, you can utilize these VMs. As for no internet access, well, if they're within the network already, I suppose they wouldn't need access, uh, internet access. Very good, very good. Uh, Andrew, I think this next one is for you. This comes to us from uh, Abraham in Wisconsin. And can you just go over the uh, Windows licensing requirements, um, just uh, if you haven't already, just so that everybody kind of has a good understanding of that? Sure, absolutely. Uh, so SnapVI requires four Microsoft licenses. Uh, we have two for the server, dedicated to the servers. Uh, and then we have the other two that are dedicated on the per user level. So for the servers, we have a 2016 uh, Enterprise Data Server License per server. Uh, and then we have the Software Assurance Pack. Uh, those are the two for the servers. And then the two for the users are the Microsoft VDA License and then the RDS License on the per user level. But uh, one thing that's important to note, as I mentioned in the presentation earlier as well, uh, if anyone does have and currently running any of these licenses in their environment, SnapVDI can also run off of those, so we don't make any of our customers uh, purchase those again. And um, if you uh, if you need the part numbers or anything like that for these, if you want to research them yourselves, uh, we can absolutely provide those to you as well. And actually, as a, a standard on our default, whenever we send out pricing to any um, prospective customers, um, anyone looking for pricing, we include all that information in our quotes as well. Perfect. Uh, thank you very much, Andrew. Uh, I guess, Matthew, coming back to you, uh, what infrastructure is required on the back end, um, I guess, of Snap VDI, and how well does it deliver video um, as well as connect to USB devices? I know you already touched, touched on the USB devices a little bit, so I guess just more talk about the infrastructure required on the back end. On the back end, uh, we would require uh, either Active Directory, DNS, or DHCP to have things integrated correctly. Uh, as far as the video and USB, uh, USBs, plug and play, uh, pretty standard stuff there in video. Uh, we don't really have to, our performance is good enough that we don't have to worry about any artifacts. And even if so, we can change it in the hardware profile to provide them the extra resources to get over it. Perfect. Um, and this is the last of the uh, questions from the registration, and then we'll move on to the questions uh, that have been coming in on the Q&A session. Um, so Adam in Tennessee wanted to know, um, can you use a GPU, I guess, in conjunction with Snap VDI? And if so, how does that whole process work? Okay. So yeah, uh, we, do pro uh, we do have an ability to have a hardware upgrade and provide a GPU for our Snap VDI, and it would work the same way as uh, allocating the memory and processors in the hardware profile. So you can choose how much resources you're allocating out and to who. Perfect. Um, and I will go ahead and start pulling up some of these questions that we've gotten over the Q&A communicator. Uh, we have gotten a good number of these, so um, if we aren't able to get to yours, um, I do greatly apologize. We will definitely um, try to make sure that we at least email you uh, the, your, the response to your answer, sorry, to your question um, after the presentation if we're not able to get to it for any reason. Um, but uh, let's go ahead and get started with um, the first one that I see here. And uh, looking at it, um, do, 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 do. so uh, how scalable is, uh, this one came to us from David, um, how scalable is uh, Snap VDI? Could this go up to possibly, say, 10,000 users or more? I mean, it, sure, it absolutely could. Um, that would be a pretty substantial installation at that point. Uh, with each brick, each brick is uh, going to take up 6U uh, rack space because of those three units. We have three 2U uh, units, two servers, uh, and one storage appliance. Um, the majority of our customers are somewhere uh, probably below the 1,000 user range, uh, but we can absolutely scale out to that point. Perfect. Thanks, Andrew. Um, this next question comes to us from Mark. 
Um, so once VMs are deployed, uh, can new software, for example, uh, an in-house developed software, uh, be installed on individual VMs, uh, or does the template have to be updated? I guess that'd be more for Matthew. Right. So once you have, say, uh, a new update to your in-house software, uh, you would have to go and create your uh, update for the template and then redeploy all those VMs out. So it's very straight, clean process that you can schedule to be done overnight. Very good, very good. And then so I'll go ahead and start pulling up our uh, next question here. Um, this one I think just kind of touches again on uh, remote locations and uh, all that kind of stuff. But um, how do end users um, go about accessing their VMs from home um, or at remote locations or on a home computer or BYOD or something like that? And that came to us from, uh, from Joe. All right, yeah, so you can utilize your, as long as you can RDP into your network, uh, you can utilize your VMs. Excellent. And uh, this one came to us from Tom. I think we've touched on this um, maybe in one of the other quick questions that we just uh, we asked, but um, SNAP VDI um, supports both persistent and non-persistent uh, users, correct? That is correct. Okay, good deal. It's a nice little check checkbox item there. Um, let's see. And uh, how would you uh, how would you describe uh, SNAP VDI's um, ability to handle you know video, audio conferencing, all that kind of good stuff? All right. So as mentioned earlier, as far as uh, voice over IP and video, uh, we dealt with them before with call centers, and we have the ability to upgrade the hardware uh, to avoid any sort of uh, artifacts that might uh, hinder other competitors in the VDI solution. Excellent, excellent. Well, um, let's see here, just kind of looking at through some other ones. Um, I know we wanted to get everybody out of here kind of early um, just so that you guys can have a few minutes to spare. Um, and uh, we once again want to thank everyone for um, attending the, the virtual Lunch and Learn today. Uh, we'll be sticking around um, until uh, the uh, two o'clock time frame, um, Eastern time, and maybe a little bit afterwards. So if you have more questions, um, we'll be sure to get to yours on there. So feel free to shoot those over to us. Um, but uh, Andrew or Matthew, do you have anything else before we sign off with the nice folks? Um, no, not really. We really appreciate all y'all's time. Uh, I guess one parting thing here, uh, if anyone does want to see a PDF version of the presentation, the slide deck that we covered, or if you would like to see a personalized demo where we can actually go into maybe more depth into something that we didn't cover or didn't go into as much depth as you would like, uh, feel free to reach out to us. We'd be more than happy to send you over a PDF version of the presentation so you can read it at your leisure or share it with any of your other team members um, or set up a, a live demo where we can kind of poke around uh, in any of the things in the interface that you'd like to see. Good deal, Andrew. Um, well, again, uh, thank you everyone so much for attending. Like I said, we'll be hanging around on the presentation uh, for the next few minutes or so. So if you have any last minute questions, feel free to shoot those on over. Um, but other than that, uh, thank you again so much for your time this afternoon. We hope everyone has a wonderful day and uh, thank you again for your interest. Goodbye.